The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Oh! Yeah. 24! Oh! From Park Place Lanes and Wyndham, featuring outstanding candlepin bowlers from all over New England. You're gonna hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it! Yes! Got a hit on it. Oh! Wow! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. And good afternoon once again, everybody, and welcome for another Sunday here on the Winds to Park Place Lanes in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and uh, this is week two. First of all, in singles, Reggie DeLine with a win last week uh, with an outstanding 404. A little trouble in the middle after a great start. He was able to get the win over Al Bullock, and today he faces uh, another tough challenge. That's right. Gary Carrington stands in his way. He's trying to make it two in a row, and first time we'll see Gary, at least on the single show anyways. All right, let's talk about our two bowlers then. First of all, our number five seed. He bowled that 404 last week to beat Al Bullock, including an outstanding 179 opening game from Needham, Massachusetts, going for his second win in a row, Reggie DeLine. Okay, Reggie comes in averaging 125. He has that uh, amazing high single of 222 and his roll-off score at 656. And again, after that win last week, uh, now can carry over a little bit, perhaps, uh, getting, that was his first appearance on the singles program here on Stars and Strikes, so he can carry that over uh, maybe a little bit to this one. Well, I'm certainly, uh, he's hoped so anyways, because he's up against another quality Candlepin Bowl in Gary Carrington. All right, let's meet Gary. He will be here uh, for his first time, as Dan said, on the singles program this year. He has been here on the doubles side, but he's been here many times before overall. He's from Plastow, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington, our number three seed. Okay, and Gary Carrington is an average of 127, has a high single 195, his roll-off score 683. And of course we'll have our bonus ball coming up at the end of the show. It'll be worth $50 this week. But uh, more importantly, we've got three strings of candlepin bowling to decide who's going to advance to our semifinal week, which will be next week here on Stars and Strikes. We're going to get this match started between Gary Carrington and Reggie DeLine right after we have these words. Don't go away. Last week here on Stars and Strikes, Reggie DeLine threw 14 marks. Six of them were strikes. He had a double strike in there as well as he threw an outstanding 179 opening game to beat Al Bolduck. He had to come from behind, though, in the third game to beat him. He gets Gary Carrington today in week two. The winner of this one faces Steve Vadme in semifinal week next Sunday. And then two weeks from today, Tom Morgan, our number one seed, will be by to try and defend that spot. One of these remaining four bowlers will be in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. And Reggie DeLine gets things started. Lane 32 here at Park Place. Five, six, and ten left for Reg. Trying to sweep it. Didn't want to cap the wood, wanted to pinch the wood along with the five pin. And he'll take a nine box. This time, the nine and the 10. Difficult leave. Got some, a couple pieces of wood to the left and another one almost directly in front of the nine pin. Not much happening there. So a little different start than he had last week. Boy, last time he just came out in a blaze. He had three straight marks to open the match last week. All right, here's Gary Carrington. Last time Gary was here was back in October when he and Jack Ray defended their number one spot, number one seeded spot in a Stars and Strikes doubles championship match as they beat Don Weatherby and John Mafio. Gary and Jack rolled a 448. So Gary is already safely into the Tournament of Champions in the doubles competition. The last time Gary was here in singles competition was in last year's Tournament of Champions 
in May of 91. He came in as the number two seed, lost his match to Pat Pay. Semifinal match. Gary is right back in the pocket and he will shoot at the 10 pin. Pins kept falling, finally pushed the seven pin over, leaving him, as Doug said, just the 10 pin for the spare and the first mark of the match. And he yes. covers. Always a very delicate shot for the right-handed bowler in that right-hand corner, the 10 pin. Gary got it done, first mark of the match. And Reggie DeLine pops out the half Worcester left. Reggie works at General Mass Marketing, lives in Needham. And Reggie's all over the place with uh, where he bowls most often. He's at Fairway Sports World in Natick, and he's at the Hanover Bowladrome, and he's at, I believe it's Philo's Bowladrome in Franklin. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Ficos. Ficos, okay. Reg, I got a couple leagues you can join in Bowles Bowling Center in Concord <laughs> if you want to come to another state. <laughs> Two, four, six left for Reg. Looking for his first mark. 23 after three boxes. Yes! Oh my! Nice shot. It's a great one to start with. Watch the two pin jump right over into the six. Very nicely done. on a spare, a little full. Gary was worried about that one, I think, when he let it go. He was afraid it was gonna be a spread eagle, and it almost happened. Now, though, that wood is improving for him a little bit as it's rolling out somewhat. Could go inside of the two pin or split the two and the four. The wood should help a little bit either way. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Oh, that's a fine shot right there. The wood coming out again makes that shot. As you see, the two pin clipped into the wood. Kept it the two pin in the in play, uh, easy for me to say, in play <laughs> much longer and as you said, cleared out the six and the 10. Two marks in a row for Gary. He threw his hands up, but it's gonna end up with six. I think he thought more, he's gonna get more like two. The one, the three, the nine and the 10 pins left for Gary. Trying to make it three in a row. And yes. He does. Oh, yeah. A couple of great shots there by Gary Carrington. He's got three marks in a row now, and they have not been easy ones. That's a four fill for Reggie DeLine on his mark in the fourth. Reggie kind of shaking his head a little bit there. Having trouble with the head pin. Seven box. Oh, big ball that time. Can't take the six pin though. He should make up his mind before he throws the ball. The wood would be good. You want to shoot the pin you get. No, he's going to take. Ooh, Ooh. missed the front piece. Too far left. He was worried about capping the wood here, shooting at the six pin. He had a clean shot at it, but just like that. So he elected to try to play the wood and he was too far left. So it's 53 after six. Gary Carrington working on a string of three spares, as you see. We may have a correction on the uh, scoreboard for Reggie DeLine. Gary trying to work through this leave. And that'll be a 10 bucks. 
Gary has had to work hard for every pin so far. We'll take another look at this 10. We're going to uh, perhaps go back and make a check on one of Reggie's earlier boxes to make sure that uh, we have the correct score. If it's off, it's off by one pin. Probably do that during the timeout. Gary just missing another spare. Boy, he has had some difficult leaves. Had three marks already. Ten bucks. And 75. The questionable box is Reggie's third box. I have six. And scoreboard here has seven, so we're going to just double check it. Probably is me, but <laughs> just once I'd like to be somebody else. <laughs> the five, the eight, and the ten. Left for Reggie. Oh, oh, yes. Nice shot. Played it way off to the right to get the maximum spin effect on that wood. And it worked for him. Oh, on the head pin for the fill. Oh, Gets a break on the 10 pin. There goes the 10. So I'm sure it probably is me in that six box because uh, we have too many people watching here. <laughs> And he's going to get by the seven. Oh. Yes, he does. Finessed it a little bit off the wood. Fine shot by Reggie DeLine. Two marks in a row, and he needed them. I'm going to go back and change that third box to seven. Gary Carrington now with the lead, and he's through the middle for a spread eagle. Gary and his wife Kathleen live in Plastow. They have two sons, nine-year-old Matthew and three-year-old Michael. Gary works as a pipe fitter for AT&T in North Andover. Does a lot of his bowling at the Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill and at the Exeter Lanes in Exeter. Reduces the lead now to nine pins, plus he's opposite a spare, already posted by Reggie in the eighth. Reggie bounced back nicely, by the way, from those previous two boxes in which he had spare opportunities and wasn't able to convert and he put up two spares in those last two boxes very very critical how about that shot for Gary Another. Carrington it's a clinic on spare making two four six this time splits the two and the four gets some help from a piece of wood in between now Reggie fills the spare with five and a half six <laughs> That'll make it easier for scoring. <laughs> Those half pins always mess me up. 89 through 8. Looking for mark number 3 in a row, and he just slipped by the head pin. I mentioned as I think of it now that uh, the New Hampshire State Canopin Championships will be coming up shortly within the next month or so the youth events junior events are being held in Concord Botwell's Bowling Center the adults at the Londonderry Bowling Center in Londonderry so if you are an NHCBA league bowler please pick up an entry blank and uh, join the state tournaments that we have scores accounted both handicap and scratch so it's something for everybody 106 opening game for Reggie DeLine. It was a very strange uh, first ball that Reggie had in that 10th box. Hit it very thin. Was able to carry six, but unable to convert the spare. Gary Carrington now looking for his second mark in a row, and he's got an eight fill on a spare. So he's got the lead at 11 right now through eight, and Joe Pagley is going to go down and take care of a loose piece of wood that has come up. Not going to be a factor in the shot, though, as you see. And it's the 6-10 for Gary Carrington. And oh, 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 coming back. 
<laughs> well, it was too far left, and the ball came flying straight, flew straight up, came right back down on the six pin. Big break there for Gary Carrington. His fifth mark, all spares. And they've been adventurous. And he'll have a shot at another one. Push the lead to 20. And threatening to go higher. No, slide by. You can gain a couple in counties. Opposite an eight box by Reggie. There it is, the 10 and a 128 for Gary Carrington, right on his average. And he will have a 22 pin lead at the end of one game here on Stars and Strikes. Two to come, and details on our bonus ball contest also to come right after these words. Gary Carrington to lead off our second game with a 22 pin lead to carry forward. And again, just Gary's throwing very smoothly, very accurately on the head pin, but things aren't always happening. Oh, certainly get that second ball working, though. That's for sure. Boy, just missed making another great spear. Gary's got five of them already in this match, and he starts with a 10 bucks. See the replay, five and the 10, he uses the wood. Gary back on the head pin again, and now, well, this is like a, a book with all the tough spare leaves <laughs> no. in it, isn't Make it? Make that spare. Five, four, five, and seven. With wood, and yes. the five pin will go. Wow. <laughs> See, did the ball hit it or did he something pin take it? Yeah, something caught it on the way by. No, it was the pin. Wood. Yeah. Reggie Deline now looking to make something happen. Reggie had three marks in the first game, but scored only a 106. Got a tough spare here with the eight pin, but the two pieces of wood out in front, he's going to have to turn. Mm. Uh, the right idea. I just just capped it, spun it around, and the eight pin stands. 10 box for Reggie. Our participating sponsor on Candlepin Stars and Strikes for this series, Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save. Emmett Horgan and all the fine folks would love to see you in uh, Salem at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Be sure and go in and tell them you heard about them here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, loyal supporters of the program. And Reggie got a huge break on that first ball. Looking at just the seven pin, as you can see. He's right on it. Yes. Matches. <laughs> Great minds travel <laughs> together, Doug, right? <laughs> the words right out of my mouth. We matching spares. Matching tens and matching spares. Gary Carrington now to fill his spare in the second, and he's right through the center again. He's through his hands up, he knew. He's just got to change the angle of, the, of attack, move left or right on the approach, forward or back a little bit, a little more speed, a little less speed. He's just got to find his niche. Oh. But boy, you can't complain the second ball. That's another great spare. Splitting the two and the four. So we're not even getting excited anymore about these because they're yeah. almost like routine. I was going to say, maybe it doesn't matter what happens That's on the first right. ball because... Some of the shots he's making. Oh, now he's found the secret. He skipped that one. I was a just going to say, isn't it ironic <laughs> that uh, that changed the flight of the ball enough so he was right in the one two pocket and the results nine pin drop. Just skipped it, took a little bit off the ball. This time, though, he's moves too far left for the five pin. Well, how ironic is that? He's made all these spectacular spares and isn't able to handle the single pin that time but he's still at 55 through four, and of course he had the lead coming in, so Reggie has some catching up to do here. There have still been no strikes in this match, and Reggie bounced that one right through the middle for a spread eagle. Didn't quite get the same uh, bounce, I guess, that Gary did, because he went right through the middle, Gary got the nine pin drop. Now 
Nine box. The lead goes up to 34. And there's the half Worcester. Well, the way this show's been going, I guess that was destined to happen eventually. <laughs> full moon out there today or strange <laughs> Reggie will take an eight and we will pause right here Gary Carrington with the lead it stands at 36 right now almost at the halfway point week two of our four week series here on Stars and Strikes don't go away Gary Carrington back to work here in game two. Gary was telling me prior to the show that he's had a bit of a problem lately with a pinched nerve in his right shoulder. It's been uh, inhibiting his motion a little bit, but he said today that he feels better, he's ready to go. He's certainly been on the head pin. That's for sure, and he's certainly been making the spares. In fact, he's making probably more than his share of considering the shots that he's had. We'll try this one now. And Whoa. it doesn't happen this time. That close. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is sacred down there today. Anything can be made. Strange as if you watched last week's show and all the strikes we had between Al Bolduck and Reggie DeLine this week. Two more great bowlers and we don't have one. The one, three, seven, and nine. Here's one we haven't seen yet. <laughs> How many different combinations are there anyway? <laughs> a quick reminder that uh, if you happen to be in the neighborhood of Park Place Lanes later this afternoon, after you watch, of course, our two full hours here on Stars and Strikes, we'll be taping this afternoon here at Park Place Lanes until about 4 o'clock, 4.15. So if you're in the neighborhood close by and you'd like to stop in, we'd love to see you. Reggie DeLine trying to make up some of this ground, and he's got to shoot at the 5.10. The wood will help. If he pinches it, don't forget the 5 is not on the same plane with the 10. He's got a good shot at it. Oh, oh threw it in front of the 10 pin. That's a tough break. Nine box. Well, Reggie's had a struggle here today. There's no doubt about that. Just knocked down the seven pin on the other lane, though. Mm. <laughs> Trying to clear a <laughs> loose piece of wood out of the channel. Now they'll shoot at the five pin this time, but again. <laughs> it's not uh, real good wood, but let's see. Uh, well, I guess it looked better than it was. He was able to play it, I think, over far enough to the right that it or was worked to his advantage. Or it was better than it looked, I should mm. say, yeah. The one and the seven for Gary Carrington. And four pieces of wood in between the one and the seven. This the head pin, and oh boy, that piece of wood came back about as far as you're going to see a piece of wood come back and stay on the lane. That's a good, what, 10 feet in yes. front of the plate? <laughs> At least. It came right by the head pin, almost knocked it down. I'd be interested to know how close that actually was because it looked very close. As he missed the head pin on the way by and then almost snapped that wood forward. Uh, Bob line judge. Mean Joe there. <laughs> Coming back. <laughs> Joe Pagley. We have a good time with Joe. So far in this game, Dan, Gary has two spares and five ten boxes. Well, it'll be a chance for Reggie to line here. Yeah, he's got to start making a move. Down by 37 now, working on a spare. 
It's going to get back into the match. Can't go f into the last game 40 pins behind Gary Carrington. That's a three fill. And a strange three fill. The two and the eight are out of there, plus the nine pin. And the nine pin is still laying there. Oh, <laughs> missed the head pin and came that close to converting it. That's when you really get aggravated with yourself, saying, I'm shooting the third ball, and the only pin standing is the head pin. That one's supposed to go down the first ball. <laughs> the lead, 35 right now for Gary Carrington. Reggie just slips by the head pin again. He'll look at the one, two, and seven. Wants to make the spare, he's got to have the head pin this time. Not gonna happen. Second box in a row. He'll shoot at the head pin with the third ball. This time for the 10 box. Gains a pin and count, but misses an opportunity there, especially since he began that two box sequence working on a mark. Well, Gary has something a little more standard now to shoot yeah. at. <laughs> the three and the six. This is when he probably just drive the three pin out of there. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh. I should not have said that. <laughs> Send Gary right to you when the show is over. <laughs> well, isn't that the way it is? You make all your cut shots, and you finally get two pins together, and you punch out the object pin. Next week, Steve Vadney, the voice from the past. Yes. Been a while since Steve has been with us. Wow, shooting at the triangle that time and driving the six pin right out. Eight box, 111. For Gary Carrington, 239 through two. Reggie DeLine gets one in the pocket this time, and will he push it over? Yes, he will. Looked like it was going to be the four, five, and seven, but instead it's a strike, and Reggie's shaking his head. Everything was moving to the left for a second. Here it comes. Looking for the double. That close, just the four pin left. But he can make up some badly needed pins here in the final two if he can convert this. Gives him 112 with a ball to come. Lead 21, less whatever Reggie puts on this mark. That was the first strike for either bowler in this match, by the way. It's a six fill, so it'll be a 118 for Reggie DeLine. Two string total, 224, and 15 pins the difference with one game to go here in week two. Stars and Strikes rolls on. Don't go away. Reggie DeLine cut seven pins off of that lead for Gary Carrington in the middle game but he's still down 15 with one to go, and he will start with the eight pin. Wood hasn't been very good to him so far in this match, and he has another tough one. Nope. This has been a very strange match, hasn't it? <laughs> okay, circle the wagons around that eight pin that time. There have been a lot of marks in this match. Seven for each bowler. That's not too bad. But the fills, the fills have not been great, and, and the marks just haven't come in the explosive manner that they sometimes will. There's another big first ball for Reggie, and he'll shoot at the seven pin. But watch out for the wood again. Plus, there's double wood in the channel. Boy. <laughs> Looks Probably. like if he caps it, he might be able to drive it right back. I think he's going to have to, because I think he goes that, you know, that way. He's going to come in contact with the wood. 
That didn't even knock the seven down. <laughs> even playing it the illegal way doesn't work. <laughs> two tens for Reggie. Could have easily been two spares if he had any help with the wood at all. But still a 15 pin advantage. Gary Carrington working on a pair of tens. And through the middle he goes, but let's see. The three, the four, the seven. Couple pieces of wood in between. Gonna go after the three pin and use the wood hopefully for the four and seven. Hmm. Not gonna happen. Ten bucks. Next week, our number two seed, Steve Vadney, gets the winner of this one. And in two weeks, Tom Morgan, our number one seed, will be here. And this oh, time, Gary shot. takes them all out. That's his first strike. He's got to be relieved at that. It really was a lot of mixing going on there. Three pin was the last one to go down, which is unusual sometimes. Reggie right back, triangle, two, four, five to shoot at for a spare. Yep. Right on it. Not an easy shot either when things aren't going well. Each bowler with eight marks now. Wants the 10 pin to get out of there, and it does. An eight pin drop. Two four left. Can't afford to miss any now. No, too far left. Forty-eight through four for Reggie. And Gary Carrington with an opportunity to add to his lead. He's working on a strike here. Oh, another big hit. I was just going to say, um, I would say that he averages more than one strike every three games. So yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me to have him throw a double, and he very nearly did. Spare on strike. Quickly another couple pins added to his lead, but he still got the spare working. The 17 plus this bonus ball. Mm, just three. So the lead is 20. That is a lob. Wow. So that will cost Gary four pins. And it'll be a five box. So that gives back five pins in count, and the lead remains at 15. With six frames remaining, it's still a 15 pin lead for Gary Carrington. This has been a very, very strange match. So who knows what'll happen here in these last six boxes. We'll be back to tell you about it. All right, here we go. Final six. Somebody's gonna win this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they both have something to do next week. <laughs> oh boy, Reggie DeLine with a half wish to right. Thankfully it was not on a spare. And he's trying to make it a spare now and comes just that close, leaving the seven pin. Great effort. So Reggie, after throwing that 179 opening game last week, has really struggled since then. He's back on the head pin there, though, for a big strike in the sixth. That's how he was throwing the ball last week in that first game. Just buried that one. There's no way those pins are going to stand up. Strike in the sixth, as Doug said. Gary Carrington leading by 15. Opposite a 10 and then the strike. It was a diamond for a moment. Now it's a little bit more friendly. The two, four, eight. A piece of wood in between that should help if he's on the two. Yes. 
Spare in the fifth. Ten marks for Gary Carrington. Oh and boy. a strike on the spare. That's Big just shot a strike. right there. Wow. Not only matches a strike, but fills his spare with 10. And increases the lead to 25. Reggie looking for the double strike. Hang we'll on. Push it over there. Let's see. Nope. The seven pin will stay. Would have liked the double. That could have uh, changed things around considerably. But instead, it'll be strike on spare, and Reggie needs to keep marking here. Absolutely. To have any chance, it would seem. Because Gary all of a sudden is on fire. Right back in the pocket. Oh. That close to a triple strike. Oh. Wow. Well, all of a sudden, both bowlers are putting things together here in the third game. Gary working on a strike. Right There's back the there for a double. Oh. <laughs> You see, that was a quick one. Eight pin to go down the last, but one huge nail in the coffin, though. If it weren't for that box where he had the three fill on the spare and then the lob, he'd have a huge string working right now. This is a big ball for both him and Reggie. Well, it looked better than that. Eight, nine, ten left. Reggie's going to have to be thinking double strike when he gets up there. 113 in the seventh for Gary. So he has added, at least right now, 14 more pins to his lead. So the lead's at 29, but Reggie will cut into that with the fill on this strike. He really, he really needs another one. Yeah, he does, and he's off target. Well, the lead is 20, uh, 21, as you see, through completed frames, which means that uh, Reggie really needs to throw a double here to force Gary to do anything. That should just about do it. I would say so. Reggie was able to put three marks together there in the middle of the string, and then a nice 10 there to finish it off. It's a 134. Watch him snap the wood. Four pin, then the six. But a 358 is probably not going to be good enough. In fact, it's already over. That's right. Already over for Gary Carrington, so he will move on to face Steve Vadney next week in our semifinal match. One thirty-one with a box to come. He's at three seventy right now. Of course, the winning total doesn't count as much today as it does two weeks from today. Yeah, absolutely right. <laughs> Championship week. All that's important now is the win. I'm sure Gary was glad to put a one forty game together here in the third game after those first two. Maybe it won't be a 140. You'll have to make both of these. <laughs> he went for it. <laughs> oh, that's right. He only needed to uh, make one of those. That's right, for the 140. So it's a 379 for Gary Carrington and a 21-pin victory, make it a 20-pin victory over Reggie DeLine. And we'll be back to talk to both bowlers in a minute. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Uh, Reggie DeLine was looking for a win number two in a row today, but uh, really I think ultimately what, 
what the difference was in this match was Gary's ability to to make those difficult spare shots early in the match. He was able to at least get a little bit of a lead, and then he had a little cushion in the third game. Yeah, he was full in the headpin most of the day, and you just can't keep a guy like Gary Carrington down. But, boy, he can make some spares, can't he? <laughs> oh, those were some terrific shots. And then, of course, the strike ball started working in the third game, and then it was pretty much lights out. Just a matter of time before he gets in groove, and uh, Reggie just couldn't get over the hump and get that lead. All right, we're going to tell you a little bit more about uh, next week's show in a minute. And don't forget, of course, coming up, Stars and Strikes doubles in just a few minutes. But first of all, a round of applause for Reggie DeLine, who will be uh, accepting the uh, fourth place check. And uh, oh, you're shaking your head yeah, still, I know. <laughs> well, it was uh, it was just one of those. It was a very strange match. We were talking about it during the while you were guys were, were going at it. It was just a very weird match. It was a weird one, but at our last string, I missed three nine and drops. The first four blocks, but I picked everyone up. I would have had a good shot of beating them. Yep. It's, uh, it, that's the kind of a way things go sometimes. You have a 179 last week, and, and then all of a sudden it falls apart. But, uh, but congratulations again on the, uh, on the effort last week, and I'm sure we're going to be seeing you again. I'll be back. All right. Thank <laughs> Thanks very much, Reggie. Congratulations. And, Gary, why don't you step up on uh, lane 31 now. We're going to see if we can win uh, a couple of sets of bowling balls here and uh, some cash as well in the bonus ball contest. It's at $50. And uh, we'll see what we can do here. Well, consistency, that's what's important. Right on the head pin again. Four is the drop, not a match for Mark McKenney of Dover, New Hampshire. Second card in a row we've had from Dover, New Hampshire. Mark's guess was eight, so you'll be receiving a consolation prize, Mark, and uh, the jackpot will go up to uh, $60 next week. And, uh, boy, <laughs> you had to work for all those pins. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what's going on today. I don't know. I throw a good ball, then I, then I split through the middle. I, I got some breaks here. Reggie uh, had some bad wood on his shots, and he was capping them. And they just weren't falling for him, and I hung in there. I'll, I'll take that victory. Well, I guess the, uh, the lesson, though, for anybody watching you today was, hey, if things aren't happening on the first ball, you know, you still got to concentrate on the second ball. Yeah, the, the second ball and uh, the third ball weren't too bad. First ball is tough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that first ball working next match, though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we got uh, somebody named Steve Vadney coming in. You ever heard of him? Oh, yeah, me and Steve, we bowled together a long time now. Yeah, we usually have pretty good matches. I think, so. actually, you might, you guys might have bowled against each other here before on one yeah. occasion. Yeah, I owe him one right now. Oh, is that right? That's yeah. the score right now? <laughs> this, one, this one's coming up. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to look forward to that one next week then, Gary. Congratulations. All right, congratulations on the win. A 379 for Gary Carrington and the victory over Reggie DeLine. And let's uh, check out the ladder now and see what's coming up in the weeks ahead. Next week, of course, semifinal match. It'll be Gary Carrington against Steve Vadney. The winner of that one gets Tom Morgan. And, uh, well, as we've talked about this before, at least uh, on paper, according to the averages and the reputations of these three guys who are remaining, uh, these, these matches could be something real special. Well, I thought we were in for it today, too, and the, the, it was a good match, but the scores weren't as high as I thought. But Steve Adney coming in, uh, Gary Carrington, and, of course, uh, one of the Morgan boys waiting in the wings. Well, now, keep also in mind that uh, Gary Carrington has already qualified for the Tournament of the Champions in doubles, so uh, he may get a shot if he wins next week to try and become the second guy to pull a double header here because Mike Morgan has already qualified in both. Yeah, that's right. Uh, should be interesting to watch the next couple weeks, and some big, big scores coming. All right, let's uh, remind you also that we've got Stars and Strikes doubles coming up in just a few minutes, week two in that four-week series as well. And next week at 12 noon, we begin it all over again with two full hours here on the wins, starting with the semifinal singles match between Gary Carrington and Steve Vadney. Until then, Doug Brown for Dan Murphy and the whole crew. So long from Park Place Lanes. <laughs>